Hello, it's Kat, and I am back for my um, October HOV injection. Um, so I'm I'm a little late this month. I usually inject my HOV on the first of the month or so, but. Um, I had some problems with insurance, so since my um, accident a couple years ago, I have had um, Medi-Cal, California's uh, Medicaid, state Medicaid program, and I have so many problems getting the right treatment and providers. Um, I haven't had too much trouble with prescriptions other than the HOV that it requires a specialty pharmacy I guess because it's an injectable and or because it has to stay cold I'm not sure um, if those are both factors I think they both are but um, and it has to be delivered to me um, so I used to get it delivered three at a time every three months but I took it one a month and the doctor who prescribes it for me now prescribes it just once a month. So I get supposed to get a delivery every month. And then I guess the insurance didn't, um, they're no longer paying the pharmacy I was getting it from. And they didn't notify me. No one notified me. The pharmacy was trying to put the prescription through and couldn't get authorization. And they didn't know what was wrong. And Anyway, it was a whole big thing, and um, I had to use a different pharmacy. So it's really a horrible when your insurance company doesn't notify you in advance of things like this. And there's not a lot that you can do about it because their um, grievance and appeals system is broken. It's, it's designed not to work, actually, so maybe it's working like it's supposed to. But nothing happens typically when you have a problem so anyway it, it's been really frustrating dealing with all the insurance crap and um, today they finally delivered the new the new um, pharmacy delivered my HOV so the other issue I've been having um, I think maybe did I talk about this last time? I think I forgot to talk about it the time before. I don't. I don't remember if I if I remember to talk about this or not. But so the um, the last injection for September, I had uh, a, a worse reaction at the injection site than the month before. In the month before, so I typically had had no um, real reaction at the site, but occasionally, I think I've been injecting this for two years now, every month for two years. And there, there were a few times when there would be like a patch of fluid under my skin, but not like in the meaty part of my thighs. And it would go away within a day or less, typically. Well, I think it was two times ago I had or maybe three times, three injections ago, I'm not sure. I had a little red patch that stayed a little longer. And it, the then probably the August injection, I don't know. My memory is weird. But um, I think in August when I injected, then I had more of a reaction. And then in September, I had a really bad reaction. You know, I, I should have... Um, come on and shown you all. It was really strange and it hurt. And even while I was injecting it, it hurt. I'm, I'm kind of remembering now, I think I said that in my video, like it hurt and it doesn't usually hurt when I inject it. So this had happened back when I used to inject um, Imitrex too. So I had first taken the oral like 25 milligram Imitrex and then 50 milligram or 100 milligram. I don't know. I don't remember the dosages, but I had to increase the dosage because it was losing its um, 
if effectiveness it wasn't working as well for my migraines and then I tried the injectables and then I the injectables were working better for the Imitrex for a while but then I started getting a bad reaction at the injection site and it still was working like only half of the time or something so I discontinued the Imitrex and um, I know over time the reaction got worse like the you know the more I injected it the worse it got the worse the reaction was so I'm assuming that's what's happening now with the HOV and so the new pharmacy when I talked to them about this um, yesterday before they delivered it yesterday or the day before I talked to the pharmacist and she said she was gonna give me the auto injector instead so it comes in the same kind of box as the syringe, the pre-filled syringe. You see, and the auto injector just is in there. There's instructions. I went online and, and watched um, the manufacturer's uh, video about how to inject it because I didn't see anyone using the auto injector on YouTube. So this is the same reason I made my first um, HOV video here a couple years ago because I couldn't find video of people actually injecting it and I wanted to see that before I did it is that weird I don't know but I wanted to know I was doing it right and and what it looked like and you know before I tried it so the um the manufacturer is um Tiva, I think. Yeah. And uh, they have a video, but it's not a live video. <laughs> so you still don't get that great of an idea. So here is the possibly the first uh, video, or I haven't seen any yet on YouTube, but this may be the first video on YouTube. <laughs> I don't know. Injecting. A Jovi from an auto injector. Um, either way, I hope this helps somebody. So it looks like this. You make sure that the name is right and the uh, date is on here. The expiration date is almost a year out, so we're good. September 2021. 20, and then, um, oh, get your cotton swab. I have these little, I got these at one of these dollar stores, these little um, individual alcohol swabs. I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to back up and move the camera and show you my sexy thighs. <laughs> so here you go. And my, and my dog's fat butt. Look at this little ginger booty. Isn't she beautiful? Uh, <laughs> So here is my, uh, what is this, alcohol pad. I'm just going to clean the whole big area here and let it dry. Do you want to see Phoenix the ginger dog while, while it's drying? Oh, baby, say hi to the people. Tell them you hope their migraines feel better. Okay. <laughs> okay, so apparently you take, don't twist, don't shake or anything. There's a window there where you can see the fluid. You sh can see the air bubble. Make sure it's clear and fluid. Everything looks good. There's no cracks. Then you pull this. <laughs> Well, it says you pull this plastic cap off. It says don't twist. Oh dear. Maybe the plastic cap is already off because I can see. Okay, I'm going to try it like this because I can see the metal parts aren't covered by plastic. I don't know. I don't know, y'all. Okay, let me just try it. So and set a 90 degree angle and you have to do it for I don't know if I should uh... 
oh yeah okay it's it's going so I can see it's it's going to um, do it I think so I'm just gonna go ahead and you're supposed to hold it for 30 seconds so um, how do I do it with my and keep it squeezed okay maybe I'm not in the in the video they didn't squeeze it but it wasn't real people I think they just pressed and I'm I'm scared <laughs> Oh, now it's not, it's not pressing. I think I do have to take this off. Hmm, I'm confused. Okay, let me try again without taking it off. Okay, it does not press. So yes, I definitely do need to take something off. It said the take off the plastic cap. Okay, I'm going to have to get the instructions on my glasses out, y'all. Okay, back up here. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't figure out how to take off this plastic cap. said so do not twist. Okay, so I'm going to take out the instructions and grab my glasses really quick. At least I'm feeling well enough to deal with this at the moment. Um, okay. Watch out, sexy secretary moment. <laughs> okay, so let me take a look. And see what I'm forgetting. Okay, so yes, that is a protective cap. I can see in the instructions. You see the protective cap? And... Yeah, so that has to come off so that the blue part is exposed, right? So let me read the instructions better. <laughs> Remove the protective cap and do not replace. Pick up the pre-filled auto injector in one hand. Hold, as shown in figure G, and pull the protective cap straight off with your other hand. Do not twist. Okay, you all see this illustration here? So, I should be able to just pull it off like I was trying, right? Let me try again. <laughs> I'm not that weak. Okay, it said to hold it like this, right? Yeah. Well, okay, you do have to pull a little harder than I thought, and it's kind of a, uh, I don't know if there's like a suction to it or what, but it's like kind of like a, a seal or something that goes, Ch <laughs> I don't know how to, how to, explain but and then you're just supposed to throw this out so I'm, just, I'm gonna put it back in the box that it came in because um, I think I put this in the sharps container when I'm done right yes so when I'm done I'm gonna throw this in the sharps container okay so try this again I'm going to um, sorry move the screen down and show you my thighs and I'm gonna do it over here said to hold it down for 30 seconds. I haven't pressed down yet. I'm, I'm trying to decide how I'm going to do it this time. If I'm going to... They are not they are not pinching or grabbing any skin in these illustrations, y'all. So I'm just going to press it down. So that I guess that's something different, too. Okay, ready? One. Ooh, okay, I feel it. It's stinging burning oh there was another click that's when it's done i think but you're supposed to wait 10 more seconds after the second click and the little there's a blue floaty thing inside that goes all the way to the bottom i don't know if you can see i i can barely see from up here but i can tell so i'm gonna let it let it go and then you're supposed to press your there's no blood here, so I'm not even going to worry too much about that. There's no blood. So, can you see this? Uh, wait. 
you I barely see anything there's like the ring from the plastic thing and just slight slight redness pinkness around there so okay here I am hello how have you been what did you think of that um, easier once I got the cap off that's what I think easier than the pre-filled syringes um, I'm not sure whether it's more or less painful because when I for for over for I don't know for a long long time my other Ijovi injections didn't hurt they barely hurt at all but the last one hurt really badly not I mean it wasn't that bad but you know, for for what it was in comparison to before, it hurt. It wasn't bad. I don't I don't want to I don't want to give that impression. But in the time before that, it hurt a little bit. I think so. This hurt a little bit, like a stingy, burning, as it was going in, like a prick. So the 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 injection itself wasn't very painful. But I did feel the sting while the um, medication was going into my skin. So it like, it, the medication itself must have burned going in or stung going in. That's what that felt like to me. So not horrible at all. Um, less painful than my last injection for sure. And we'll see... Um, Still no no real reaction at the moment. Let me see if you can see this. There's just some little, see the little pink speckles around the area where I injected? That's it. So I'll see what happens tomorrow um, or t later tonight. And hopefully, hopefully this will be better. Um, what else is going on? Um, so good news, though, I, I've been seeing this new pain management doctor. Remember to throw that thing in the sharps container, <laughs> by the way. Um, but I've been seeing a, uh, this pain management doctor who, who has, um, he's kind of, I don't know, he's kind of a rehab guy like a rehab specialist but he's uh in the pain management department at the UCSD facility here um and uh he and he's done studies on or he is conducting a study now part of a study anyway about uh the use of I think psilocybin for pain management so that's really interesting to me as someone who doesn't want narcotics um, and prefers more natural uh, methods and somebody who has bad reactions to a lot of medications um, that's something I would be willing to explore and I, I'm understanding that it's helping a lot of people with various issues so I'm really interested in that but what's really amazing news is that this doctor has now agreed because I've had such a hard time with my insurance and everything but this doctor has now agreed to manage my TBI treatment to like direct my care and um, help you know uh, kind of facilitate like help me get what I need and things like this so I I cried tears of relief <laughs> in his office the other day and um, I'm so happy that he is willing to do that and that he cares I'm gonna cry again <laughs> um, so he's gonna see me every two weeks for a little while and we'll see how that goes and hopefully he can help me kind of straighten things out figure out what's worked you know what what helps and what doesn't and what to try next so 
I'm really happy about that. And uh, my biggest concern other than the uh, TBI recovery and migraine and p other pain management now, I mean, those, those are my number one focus, right? But uh, as, as a result of having these injuries, you know, I, I don't have an income. <laughs> it's been really impossible to figure out what I can do to make money and I'm in rehab a few days a week and then have various other you know medical appointments and uh, everything and oh and I started the ABI program, so the community colleges here, or one of the community colleges, or maybe two here in the San Diego area, has a, uh, a program for people with acquired brain injury. And so since, did I tell about this last time? I can't remember if I talked about this, but I probably not because I think it just started. Uh, yeah, it just started uh, a few weeks ago, so like the first or second week of September, so I probably didn't, um, so I, I, now it's online because of COVID, it's much easier for me to participate because I don't have to worry so much about my symptoms being aggravated by like environmental stuff, noises, lights, uh, you know, and I don't need to worry about getting there or getting car sick on the way there or, you know, <laughs> I don't even have to get out of bed to attend class if it's a bad day. If it's, you know, a bad day, I can just turn off my video and listen and type my re uh, responses when needed. You know, it's, it's pretty awesome to do some of these things we can do now with COVID. Like, oh, also, I was able to watch my nieces in another state. I was able to watch her swim meet tonight. And, and a couple weeks ago, I watched her swim meet as well because um, they're putting them online and uh, showing them, you know, because they're not allowing people to watch in person. So, um, strange how these very difficult times have produced some very helpful um, accessibility options <laughs> and comfort options you know it's like it's like it's so uh, different just being able to sit at home and do that stuff so Sorry, I'm getting really nauseous now. I'm gonna probably cut this short. But uh I'm trying to think what else I wanted to say here, but um oh I know. So you might remember, I don't know if I talked about this, but I don't know how long ago, maybe a couple months, two or three months. I don't know. I had uh, a bunch of injections for like uh, nerve blocks and trigger point injections for my cervical neck, you know, cervical area and occipital, so um, occipital area here and the base of your skull um, to help with the pain and migraines. And um, I also did that at UCSC Pain Management but with a migraine specialist, a different doctor. And I think it helped me a lot this time. I had done trigger point injections before that weren't that helpful, but this whole thing helped a lot. I think I just needed him to do the trigeminal stuff, the stuff on the side like this has three um, branches to the nerve and I get a lot of pain there, and then I get these intense pains more back, more here on the side of my head. Sometimes, like flashes, 
Uh, and now I feel like those injections might be wearing off a little because the last week or two, couple weeks, my migraines have been just slightly higher again. So before the injections, be, let's back up. Be, I'm going to stay with you for a few minutes. <laughs> before I started the HOV injections, I had a constant migraine that was like an eight or nine, like constantly. Since, I think it took the first few months, you can go back and look at my first videos. Um, the first one is, is fun to watch. <laughs> but um, you'll see like it, it gradually worked better. I think it was a few months before my migraines were like the the days that were like eight and over were like almost cut in half. So most of my days then were six to eight on the pain scale for the migraine and neck pain. And after the occipital um, nerve blocks and trigger point injections I had a couple months ago then it was like five to seven you know so it helped a little bit like I don't know and and oh and also remember I've been a week now past my HOV injection date so that could have been uh, part of the reason I was having more like eight days lately and a couple nine so um, so now that I've injected again we'll see how how that goes and then also I had a hormonal migraine last weekend so you know that's gonna happen anyways um, for me but it but it can be quite a bit worse so it wasn't unbearable it was bad but not unbearable so most of my days lately have been more like fives to sevens and then the last week or two I've had some eights and, and maybe once or twice a nine for at least some hours with a bad migraine. So now we'll just see what happens moving forward. We'll see if I react to the uh, auto injector type of HOV and how effective this round seems to be, we'll see. Um, but hopefully I'll see you back here next month. The pressure in my head is getting so bad and the nausea is still kind of, uh, you know. So um, it's time to turn this off and say goodnight. I hope everyone gets what they were looking for coming here and um, Please, oh, please um, look at, you know, look at my other video, see if there's anything that can help you. Remember, this is the first time I used the auto injector, and um, before that, I used the pre filled syringes so that all my other videos will have that. Um, and then, it, oh, if you, um, can help or if you know anyone who may help uh, I I will post my um, GoFundMe and other information in the in, in the um, description below thank you